So with that, we bring in Nikki Haley, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. and author of With All Due Respect, Defending America with Grit and Grace. Ambassador, very good to have you here today. You know, this language from Vladimir Putin, we've heard a lot uh, over the years from him, but the discussion of cleansing people from society, cleansing scum and traitors, and how people understand the difference between true patriots and these individuals. What does that evoke for you? Well, it's just interesting because now he's starting to verbalize who he truly is. We always knew this about him. I and mean, we knew this when he helped cleanse people in Syria with chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. We've seen it through his brutal attacks when he's tried to poison um, political opponents and tried to eliminate people. I mean, so this is not anything new for him to think like that. It's just interesting that he has chosen to verbalize that, which lets us know he is seeing and feeling pressure on the inside. Now, do I think that's going to change his tactics? No, I don't think it's going to change his tactics. But you're seeing the real Vladimir Putin, and I think we need to take him at his word. Uh, well, Anthony Blinken, excuse me, suggests that it might provoke a change in tactic because clearly he is uh, frustrated. There have been a lot of reports that he has uh, let go of some of his top intelligence officials, some of his military officials perhaps as well. Here's, here's uh, Secretary of State Blinken on where this may be headed. We have a strong sense of what Russia could do next. We believe that Moscow may be setting the stage to use a chemical weapon and then falsely blame Ukraine to justify escalating its attacks on the Ukrainian people. Obviously, this is a, a very real fear, Ambassador, given the frustration and the stalling of the Russian military within Ukraine. And I don't think Secretary Blinken's over-dramatizing this. I mean, my concern was a few days ago when Putin started to refer to the fact that there were bioweapon labs in Ukraine. That was very chilling for me because the last time that they kind of tried to play games like that was literally with Assad in Syria. And within a week, they used chemical weapons. And they would do this when they couldn't break through certain resistance. They would do this when they couldn't conquer areas they wanted to conquer. If they want to get into Kiev and they can't get there, this is kind of, you know, the prelude for saying he's going to use chemical weapons and he'll just wipe the people out so that he doesn't have to encounter any more resistance. We need to be very, very cautious of that, Martha. I saw what chemical weapons can do. It's a horrific death. You are choking and suffocating on your own fluids. It's horrendous. And it takes everything to a whole new level if he uses chemical weapons. And I think that Biden and his administration need to say that. So, Okay, because that, that, that's the next question. How do we stop him from doing that? What kind of ramifications does he need to understand would be put in place if we see that kind of warfare? Well, I think what he should do is this shouldn't just be a Biden situation. This should be an alliance situation. He should get with all of our European allies. He should get with any allies that we have around the world that are helping Ukraine, and we should speak with one voice, which is to say on the front end, don't wait and be reactionary like Biden has been. Say on the front end that if you use chemical weapons in Ukraine, you are escalating this to an entirely different level. Let him figure out what that means. He's seen the sanctions. He's seen the pressure. He's seen the isolation. Let him know that the world sees this as a as an escalation if he does that. Secondly, I think they should tell China that as well, that if, if Putin does this, that this is going to take it to a whole new level so that China knows exactly where we're coming from. So per perhaps there's a potential on Thursday when President Biden goes to Brussels to have that discussion with our allies. There has been a lot of coordination. I think the world has been heartened to see how clearly everyone sees the moves of Vladimir Putin here. It's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry when you look at what's going on in Ukraine. It's a very clear evil that's being carried out on these people. Uh, and we are seeing a lot of coordination. We hope that, that it lasts um, in, in terms of achieving the goal here. Here's President President Biden talking about his discussion that he is planning to have tomorrow with President Xi. I think we're in a genuine struggle between autocracies and democracies and whether or not democracies can be sustained. When I, I'm going to be speaking to President Xi tomorrow. He does not believe democracies can be sustained in the 21st century because things move so rapidly, technology is changing so much, democracies don't have time to arrive at consensus. How do you read what China's doing right now? And what would you say in that conversation, Ambassador? 
Well, make no mistake that China and Russia are aligned in this. China and Russia have been aligning for a while because they have one common um, thought, and that is that they think that the U.S. and the West are the great sinners. They don't believe in freedom. They don't believe in democracy, and they're going to fight it. We know China knew this was going to happen. We also know that China is working with Russia. So Biden needs to go in there knowing that he's not going to convince China otherwise. He should be issuing warnings to China and let them know that not only he, but the alliance, if China helps Putin, if China extends a lifeline to Putin, that China will start to pay a price. That's the message he needs to send. He doesn't need to listen to him. He doesn't need to believe him. They're going to lie to him. I dealt with the Chinese. They tell you what you want to hear. The goal is you tell them what you need them to hear. That's what needs to happen. All right. A lot of Americans are scratching their heads over the fact that Russia is at the table with Iran trying to revive the Iran nuclear deal. And they're essentially negotiating on, on our behalf on that side of the table. And they're going, how could this be possible? How does how is Putin working with our government essentially to get an Iran deal? How how can that be happening? It's so outrageous. It's tone deaf. The idea that we would have a war criminal at the negotiating table with the number one state sponsor of terrorism is just ridiculous. I mean, we absolutely should not even be thinking about an Iran deal at this point. Um, when we've seen what Iran's done recently, um, trying to attack U.S. embassies, we should also look at the fact that don't take lift the um, the terror ship label on IRGC. I mean, these. Iranian Revolutionary Guards, they're terrible people. President Raisi, I hear that he's looking at lifting the sanctions off of him. They literally are responsible with killing over 600 American soldiers, at least, and that's just currently. So we have to go back and look at, are you really willing to sell your soul for the idea to say that you got into a deal that's not even good? I mean, start thinking about who you're working with. You can't sleep with the devil or the devil will own you. I will say that till the last breath that I have. And the fact that Biden continues to talk to China, talk to Iran, talk to Russia, talk to Iran, to the Iranians, like it's, it's ludicrous. And all he's doing is making the world um, more dangerous and he's making the U.S. look more weak. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador Haley, great to have you with us.